Hi, I'm Bruce Taylor. I'm director of the Center for Adolescent Literacies at UNC Charlotte. I want to welcome each of you to the Freedom School Evaluation Project. Um, this short video is designed to give you an introduction to Freedom Schools and to the assessment project that we will conduct in the summer of 2016. Uh, it's something that our center has helped with since 2009. Uh, so it's an ongoing project. We're doing um, some evaluations along the lines that we've done in the past, but introducing some new things this summer as well. So let me introduce those things. But first, a little bit about Freedom School. Freedom Schools was developed by the Children's Defense, Defense Fund out of Washington, D.C. It's a, uh, in many cities nationally uh, and communities. Um, so they have nonprofit partners typically that help run these at the local level. The curriculum is provided by the Children's Defense Fund. It has a strong literacy component called the Integrated Reading Curriculum. So kids go to a Freedom School site, they get uh, in the morning, they get breakfast, and then they have a really fun, energetic time called Harambe, which is a key Swahili word that means let's come together. So it's a time of celebration. And then the kids ease on into the integrated reading curriculum time, which lasts about two to two and a half hours. Then they have lunch, and then in the afternoon they have some activities um, that uh, vary by site. But the integrated reading curriculum is uh, developed by the Children's Defense Fund, and it's pretty consistent from location to location. Um, the idea behind uh, the, this project is to help empower kids and give them good role models. The uh, classes are led by uh, college-age servant leader interns who are trained uh, by the Children's Defense Fund and by, again, our local nonprofit partner, Freedom School Partners. So it's a great program, and uh, we've got some results to share with you about what, uh, you know, what they have accomplished through the years. Like I said, we've been doing this work with Freedom School Partners since 2009. Uh, we conduct pre- and post-test evaluation uh, using the basic reading inventory. That's our primary evaluation tool, and I'll share a little bit more information about that. This year, at a few sites, we're going to introduce a new uh, tool called the Equal Shanker. Uh, both, of the, both of these, the BRI and the Equal Shanker, have been around for a long time, and they're both informal reading inventories, and we do pre-post assessment uh, using those tools. We work in essentially two teams. We do two sites per day during the pre-assessment phase and the post-assessment phase. So we are at two sites per day, typically from about 8.45 to around noon or 12.30, depending on how many kids, uh, when they go to lunch, and how, how much time we need uh, after we're done evaluating to help uh, to finish up our scoring. But typically about three hours. Uh, from start to finish at each site. Again, a team at each site. You can see that uh, Freedom School begins on June 16th this year. Our first day for evaluation will be June 17th. It'll go through June 24th. And then we come back July 18th through the 26th to do the post-assessment evaluation. We try to get as many kids as we can at each site. We won't get them all. Uh, we have to have permission, consent forms from them, from their parents, and so for all the kids who have consent, we get as many as we can, and then in the post-assessment phase, we only evaluate kids that are there who participated in the pre-assessment. Uh, typically, uh, with 14 sites like we're doing this year, we expect to do well over 200, 200 to 300 kids total in, in the project, so it's quite a few, which is why we have a pretty, uh, pretty robust evaluation team, and we're glad you're a part of that. Uh, through the years, the results that we, uh, from our data, show really a pretty remarkable benefit from this program. Um, this is a, a chart from our 2015 report that shows, uh, as has shown in other years as well, that about 60% of the kids who are in Freedom Schools uh, show some increase in their ability to read as measured by the BRI about 25 to 30 percent uh, maintain in their ability and somewhere between 8 and 12 percent show modest declines. Um, what, what we know about this is that it's been pretty, this has been pretty consistent. Uh, the scores you see here are a distribution of their frustration scores at all sites from 2015. We also uh, do another measure of their independent reading levels, but the pattern is pretty consistent. So there's Pretty strong benefit to this. 
We don't know what the carryover into the school year is, but we know that uh, this is highly suggestive that Freedom Schools are helping these kids during the summer maintain and gain in their ability to read. So it's pretty important work. This year uh, we're going to pursue two tracks of research. One uh, is built around this first research question. Uh, did Freedom School scholars show any change in their independent and frustration reading levels as made, measured by the BRI. So that's the work we've done sort of year in and year out since 2009 with a few minor variations. This year we are, in addition to that, trying to help Freedom School partners find uh, a more streamlined way to gather data on all kids at all sites using their staff. So we are piloting the Equal Shanker at four of our sites alongside the BRI and to see uh, if which of these tools with modification might be something that they could use on their own uh, so that they can get more data on uh, at more of their sites with more of their kids from year to year. So it's kind of a two-track project this year. Just know that as an assessor, you're going to be trained on the BRI. We have a small group of us that will be cross-trained on the Equal Shanker. Uh, we'll only be doing that at four sites on a kind of 50-50, half BRI, half Equal Shanker. So what we need you to concentrate on is the BRI, uh, and we're going to work with a few folks to cross-train them on the Equal Shanker. Know also that they're really similar, they're really similar um, assessment tools. So the B, the BRI, or basic reading inventory, it's a uh, like a lot of reading inventories. It's a big set of uh, assessments. We use two, Form A and Form B, which include graded word lists. So these are lists of 20 words. We have the kids read them. Uh, we mark down the errors, and we go through until we get an independent and instructional and frustration level score that tells us which reading passage. Uh, to go to. So we have kids read leveled passages. We get uh, as many of those levels as we can on the leveled passages. We do a kind of an abbreviated uh, running record on those. And then with each passage is a set of comprehension questions. So those comprehension questions are really important because it's comprehension is the end goal of reading and it's what the BRI gives the greatest weight to. So there's three parts, the graded word lists, passages, and with each passage is a set of questions, five to ten questions. So our goal is to get a set of scores on each scholar on the graded word lists, the comprehension, and the comprehension questions, these independent instructional and frustration level scores. We also get scores on the passages, uh, but it's that graded word list uh, that we need the complete set of scores on that lets us know which passage to start on, and then comprehension being the most important part, we need a full set of scores, independent instructional and frustration. We'll explain this in the face-to-face -face training, but just know that it's graded word list passages, questions. These are pretty common reading evaluation tools, and we're going uh, taking kids through a set of these so that we get these different levels of scores, and then we report that data. And like you saw on the chart, we really look at the frustration level scores and those independent level scores. The instructional level scores are important, but they vary and sometimes fall across a range. So what we report are those independent levels, which are kind of a floor effect or a baseline score and then the frustration frustration kind of a ceiling effect uh, so again the training will uh, will kind of get that uh, all lined out and give you lots of practice on it so the basic reading inventory let's go ahead and get acquainted with that um, I'm going to give you a, a preview of what that looks like and how we use it now the actual training on how to do it will cover in the face-to-face -face training but I just want to give you a uh, have you come prepared for that training with an idea of what this actually looks like? So the BRI um, Form A and Form B are essentially the same thing just with different passages and different words and what we're looking at right now is the student booklet. This is what the children will look at while we're doing the assessment and then there is also a teacher or assessor book uh, that you'll mark in. Uh, so the kids don't mark in this. It's what we open up. Uh, usually we're sitting next to a child and this is between us. We cover up what we need to cover up until we're ready for them to read a list of words or a passage. Um, so, for instance, you'll see uh, that there are multiple uh, lists of words. They go from pre-primer 
to grade 12. The passages go pre-primer to grade 8. So here is here are, excuse me, the first two lists of words. Here's list AA. And it notice in here it doesn't say pre-primer or primer, but it's but that's what they are. And so it starts with this list of words. And you have what we have the kids do is we determine where they should start. We start two grade levels below their current grade level. And so a kid would start, we'd say, go ahead and start reading, and me, get, home, not. And what we do is we mark the miscues or errors that they make. They get two tries, so they read through each list once. We call that first reading the sight reading, and then the second one is the analysis, so they get a second shot at only the words they missed. So there are 20 words on each list. The kid reads through it once. We mark down the errors. We go back and have them read again. Uh, that said the, the words that they missed um, and then we go on to the next list uh, if we're having them read a list and they make too many mistakes uh, then we go back to an easier list and if they do fine then we keep going until they hit frustration so we have the kids read these lists of words and they go on uh, until um, until they hit frustration level and that information is in your scoring sheet so you'll see these lists of words go up through grade 12 they get harder um, as you'd expect and but we have kids that even you know intermediate grades kids that go pretty far up these lists sometimes we see quite a range of kids so this is what the student book looks like each of you will get a copy of this. We provide all the materials you need. So, and then there's this set of passage that goes pre-primer through grade eight, and you'll see the list of them uh, of the passages there. And you'll notice that the first two are really short. They include some pictures and very simple text. Here's the second one: "Walk in the Fall." Uh, I think some of us that have been on this project a long time can recite these by heart. And then you get into them. I think this is the first primer, primer or first grade one, and you'll notice the pictures drop off. They get a little longer. And what we do is we, for instance, on a passage, I'm going to skip forward here a little bit. So here's Bill at camp. They're not long, but we cover it up until the child's ready, and we say, okay, uh, go. And we have them read. We do a miscue analysis. Then we cover the passage back up, and then we ask a set of comprehension questions. And again, what we're doing is we're, um, just like the graded word list, we're trying to get an independent instructional and frustration level score. So the kids will read typically three, four, sometimes five of these, um, and then we get those scores. And those scores are on the score sheet. Here's the rest of the passages, Hungry Bear. Notice the font gets a little smaller, the words get a little bigger, the sentences get just a little more complex. Um, so these get a little more sophisticated. Form B looks just like this. And I think this is the last one for the Form A. Um, this is what you write on. So you'll see first there's this score sheet. You put the name of the kid. They have each have a scholar ID. That's a number we give you. The grade they just completed in school, their gender, the date of the test, the site, which will be the school or church or location that you're at, your name as the examiner. And then we want to start and end time in the total minutes. It's really important, particularly important for us this year because we're trying to decide, make these decisions about what are good tools that the, that the uh, client, Freedom School Partners, could use and that time piece really winds up being important. As crazy as this looks, it's not that complicated. You're basically, it's in this section that you're writing the scores um, from the graded word list. It's, you know, here's the first reading, that's the site, then the analysis, the number correct that they got on the first reading, the number correct they picked up on the second reading, that gives you a total score. So a kid might get 17 on the first one and two more, and that gives them a total score of 19. And what the evaluation tells you is that that's a, an independent level score. And you go up, again, we take them through enough of these passages. Ideally, we get an independent instructional and frustration level score. Now, kids aren't always linear. Sometimes they, you know, a kid starts off with a set of words or a passage. They're independent, and then they go instructional, and they might drop back to independent. But we try to get them until we get to a frustration level. Those scores on this will take you, tell you which passage to start on, 
We start on the passage, they read a passage, they answer the questions. We keep track of the number of mistakes or miscues. We do not care what kind of miscues they are. Uh, we are not evaluating these kids for purposes of instruction. This is only for program evaluation. So we just want the number of miscues and then the questions, the number of questions that they missed. And then that gives us those in independent instructional and frustration level scores. We write that stuff down here. So you get the word list scores, the passage scores, the comprehension scores, and we give greatest weight to the um, to the uh, comprehension. So typically the comprehension score is what becomes the estimate of reading level. We just put that in a couple of places. There's some room here at the bottom for general observations. We'll give you some examples of that and scoring notes. It's particularly important if you ran into a problem with a kid to note that stuff. So this is the cover sheet that you'll fill out. Uh, but before you get to that, you're going to have to take notes on each of these. So this is what you are writing on. So if you start a kid on the pre-primer list, they do the first one, you leave any the first reading of the 20 words, you leave blank any that they get correct, you uh, indicate their miscues, so like if a child read got instead of get, you write got there. Um, if they self-correct and say no for number four, and then they say oh that's not, you put no and then an SC for self-correct. Don't worry, we'll we have uh, training materials, we have a cheat sheet for you to have when you're evaluating. Uh, it's not hard. And then you, the ones they miss, you give them a second reading. And when you go down, you'll notice the number correct. Again, maybe they got 17 correct on this first one and then two, and that'd be a total of 19. And down here at the bottom, this tells you whether it's independent instructional or frustration. You'll notice there's some hybrids in there, uh, but it's pretty much independent instructional and frustration. So if they miss none or one, it's independent. If they miss two, three, or four, it's instructional, and so on. Uh, more than 14 is frustration. And if you go down the lists, again, these are the same lists the kids see. Again, it's miss none or one, miss two, three, four, it's instructional. And that's how we do the word lists. So we start the passages um, at one grade level below their highest independent on the graded word list. So the graded word list tells us where to start the passages. And here's your score sheet. What you do is just mark miscues. If a kid reads sat for sits, you write sat above there and put a little tally mark off to the side. But you don't worry about any of this miscue analysis. We don't care about that. That's great information if you are working with a child and want to know how to help them. And while Freedom School Partners cares very much about helping kids, the purpose of the BRI is not to inform instruction uh, for the kids. It's what we do in the classroom, but for this, it's for program evaluation. So we just do a simple miscue analysis. Again, we'll tell you what counts as a miscue, but the number of miscues tells you the level. And then you go to the questions. And you'll notice for the first couple of passages that are short and simple, very few mistakes, doesn't take many mistakes to get to a frustration level, there are only five questions, doesn't take very many mistakes to get to an instructional frustration level of their questions, but then as the passages get a little longer, uh, you get up to ten mistakes for frustration level on the miscues, and you get start getting into the ten, all of the rest of these have ten questions, and it's five plus mistakes. Uh, get you to the frustration level. So again, we'll train you on all this. Just wanted to give you a heads up on what this looks like. Uh, we hope this is helpful. Have a little bit more information for you on some other resources. All right, in addition to, uh, in addition to the, um, this video and the training, we have a couple of other resources that I wanted to make you aware of. We have a project wiki that you can refer to, uh, and we have an assessor's handbook. Uh, the wiki is at uh, is a PB Works site. It's a, at uh, Freedom School FSP, excuse me, FSPEvaluation.pbworks.com. You can see that, and we have this assessor's handbook. It's linked at this site. We also will have sent that out as a copy to you, so you can begin to preview that and get familiar with it. In the handbook, you'll see some information about Freedom Schools, about the evaluation work we've done. It'll have our schedule, 
Uh, it'll have contact information for everybody so that if you need to reach out to somebody, you can do that. It'll have some information about the BRI and things like that. And then our site, you'll see in addition to that information, you'll also see these training videos and some other things. Let's take a quick look at the site. So this is the Freedom School uh, evaluation site. You'll see that the schedule is duplicated there. Tells a little bit about the program, but we have hiring information. So if you are in the process of still doing paperwork and HR stuff, you can click there. There's some information about our training. Uh, if you want to get a closer look at the BRI and the ECWA Shanker, you can click on assessment tools and then information about the assessment schedule and site information. That is also duplicated in the handbook, but just so you know, it's there if you want to see it. So for example, um, if you want to know more about the training, uh, just right now have the dates up and we'll be adding these videos and some other things, but you have uh, our agenda for those face-to-face -face trainings is here. The handbook is linked here. Know that the training dates are June 8th and 9th for part one and June 15th and 16th for part two. Each one of you should be signed up for a part one and a part two. So you come to one of the part one sessions, June 8th or 9th, and one of the part two sessions, June 15th or 16th. All of them are from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. in the College of Education room 102. If you park in the student union parking deck and walk through the union over to the College of Education, we're on the main floor of the College of Education. It's pretty easy to find. If you have any questions, by all means, email me and uh, we'll, we'll get things figured out. I hope you have found this helpful. Um, again, it's just a uh, basic introduction. Uh, to the resources and to the tools we're using, let you know a little bit about Freedom School and the work we're doing. Uh, reach out to me if you have any more questions and we can get that information to you. Once again, the face-to-face -face trainings, which are really important, are June 8th and 9th and 15th and 16th. Come to one of the part ones, one of the part twos. And if you have questions, email me at bruce.taylor at uncc.edu. I look forward to working with you this summer uh, and just learning more about Freedom Schools and its impact on kids in our community.